What's up, my brothers? What's up, my brothers, my sisters, whoever's here? I see you, Tita. Um, Danny, I see you, my brother. No question. Thank you for coming in. Uh, but this is not a, this is not going to be a regular a regular how you say a regular night. This is going to be it's going to be a story, a true story, like always. But a story that I saw today, and I've been thinking about that story all day, and and I don't know. I I really have no idea why. I never, you know, I don't know how, why I've been thinking about this story. I don't know, maybe because, the, because of what happened to the individual, to the individual who I'm about to talk about. You know, what happened to him was kind of fucked up. And, and you know, who is to blame? Who is to blame about this? So, you know, bear with me, guys. Bear with me for a couple of seconds, okay? Now, today, like always, you know, I go to YouTube and I check things out. Like, you know, I, I like to do a lot of, lot, lot of lot of old stories on YouTube that a lot of people don't see. I'd be seeing them and I like to bring them out sometimes. So today, I forgot what it was, what I was looking for. I forgot what I was looking for. But whatever it was, I don't remember because I saw the story and the shit, like, really got to me, you know, like really, really got to me what some people would do in the name of God. I mean, serious, what, 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 what people would do in the name of God. You know, this story is, is not, how can I say, it's, it's, it's not a happy story. It's not a happy story. You know, it's kind of, a, maybe it's a sad story, maybe, you know, however you want to take it. You know, a lot of people saying that person deserves it. A lot of people saying uh, we told them. Um, you know, this is on the stories that I'm that I'm that I'm seeing on YouTube that I saw on YouTube, and and I and I I saw the story twice. It's like about forty five minutes, and I saw it twice. So that's almost two hours of looking at the story. You know, to make sure I get the story right, and and you know. It's just crazy what people would do for the name of God. You know, I'm pretty sure everybody here believes in God. I believe in God. Uh, I believe in Almighty. Some, like I said, like I spoke about this two, three days ago, that somebody had to create this, this beautiful planet and, and, and so on and so on and so on. So, you know, our people, our people, how can I say, man, um, well, wow, like brainwash. Our people brainwash, brainwash. Uh, because the story I'm about to tell you is about a kid. He was an American. Um, he, I, I believe he, he lived in um, Alabama somewhere, Alabama or Georgia. I forgot. Alabama or Georgia, this kid lived that. This kid is uh, an American, of course. Um, but he, he's, I, I don't know if he was Chinese. Japanese, I don't know, but he was Oriental, but he was American, born and raised in the United States. The story of this kid is that he was a regular kid growing up, um, good family, uh, father, mother loved him, only child, he was the only child, the only child, okay, all right, let's get that, I don't know if I said that right, he was the only child taken care of, I mean, he was the only child that, uh, you know, had a beautiful mother, had a wonderful father that was there all the way with him, um, <clears throat> excuse me, since the day he was born to the day, the day he died. And, you know, the the parents believed in God and they used to go to church and all this, you know, all this good stuff. There was good Christians. Yeah, there was good Christians, you know, good Christians. But this kid has something that got him in trouble. You see, this kid, as growing up, he was one of these kids that always liked to go outside and um, and always liked to go, you know, like like 
like you know, he he was like a wilderness kid, a kid that liked the trees and like and like to go camping and and when he used to go camping with pops and moms, you know, this kid used to just break out and go on his own. And I mean, stay out there for about an hour or two. Uh, one one story was that his father and mother took him somewhere and he broke out. And he stood out there for like about two or three hours. They had to call the police and everything. He was like about the age of 12 and stuff like that. And all he was doing is walking, climbing mountains. He used to like all that shit. He used to like to walk and 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 and, and discover. He used to like discover, you know, discovering shit, you know, like like everybody else, you know. And and as older he was getting, the more he was getting into becoming a Christian and becoming a good Christian, you know, and, and to become a good Christian is for you to forgive and, and to treat people with the kindness and, and, you know, and stuff like that. And, you know, be gentle, be nice, no cursing, no smoking, no drinking, all that stuff. This young man was doing everything like i said a perfect christian if there's a such thing of a perfect christian you know so what happened with this kid that he you know he went to school just like every other you know just like red, like every other kid went to school uh had a girlfriend um from school he went to a high school from high school he went to college and when he left college when college was over instead of getting himself a job he told his father and mother that he wanted to go and become, um, how do you call those people that, I forgot the name of it. How do you call those people that like to go to different countries and like to teach Christianity, you know, like to teach the other people from different countries how to be a Christian. And, and plain and simple is, is to, to teach other people about God, Jesus Christ, God, all that, you know, all that stuff. And he always had a Bible in his hand. Always. Wherever he went, he had a Bible. This dude was, forget about it, one of the best. One of the best. Uh, wherever they wanted him to go, he would go with no problem. He went to uh, India. He went to France. He went to Africa. Man, this kid almost went all over the world. And he did that with his Bible in his hand. And, you know, he did that with uh, with this group that was, oh, God, I forgot the name. It was a group. And there was a, a bunch of young men and women that there was Christians. And their job was to go to different countries, countries that don't believe in God and, 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 and you know, just don't believe in the Catholic or God or Jesus or that, all that stuff. He wanted to preach the word of God. And what's the best place to do that? To go to places where people don't believe in Christianity. No Catholics, no Christians, no Jewish, no none of that stuff. None of that stuff. These are people that just believe in whatever. You understand? One day, he had to go back to, to um, India. And in India, they have little islands, little small islands, you know, they have like about, about four or five little islands and stuff like that, you know, saying beautiful islands, whatever. But some of these islands, you have people that live there. And these people that live there, they are like what you call, my God, like, like what you call, they have no kind of idea about the outside. You understand what I'm saying? They have no idea about nothing, about no TV, no uh, video games, no dressing, no no gold, no nothing, nothing, nothing. They, they are like what you say in the Stone Age. The Stone Age, they're like fucking living like, like, like cavemen. You feel me? They have no ideas. These are islands especially this one island and it's right next to uh, India and this kid heard about this island and the people that lives there there's belief that there's like over 
40 to 500 men and women and children living in this island. The island, the name of these people is uh, the Philip, the uh, God, what is it? The, the, the Levy, the, the living team, something like that. If, if, I'm, if I might be saying it wrong, it's the living, the living team, something like that. You guys check it out if I'm saying it wrong. And these people, believe it or not, they, they, they walk around with arrows and they walk around with spears. And when they see a plane passing by, they, they literally shoot the arrows to the plane. I mean, they, you know, I mean, Imagine how 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 back are these people that they shooting arrows at planes that passes by the island. You understand what I'm saying? I mean, it's crazy. They they, they throw harpoons and all that shit because these people don't have no idea what the fuck is a plane. So for I mean, for years, I'm talking about since the first time man went to the island, and that was like in the 1800s, early 1800s, like 18 something. Man finally went to the island and landed in the island. And every time they used to go to the island, what happened? You have the people, the tribe, coming with the arrows, coming with the harpoons, and yet And you know, few a lot of people, a, a lot of a lot of you know, different people died uh, from from these people, from the people in the island. And let's call them the tribe. Let, let's 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 call it the tribe. The tribe from these tribes. And remember, there's no, there's only like about maybe like I said, like to forty to five hundred. There's nobody really, really knows how many peoples in that island, because the government of India made a law that no outside world could go to the island. Leave those people alone. They happy. Don't fuck with them. You know. I mean, by 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 regular by regular people going to the island, all what all you're gonna do is get those people sick. Remember, those people don't never went out. All they eat is whatever that 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 island gives them to eat. So whatever little animals or whatever eat leaves or whatever berries or whatever whatever they eat, they eat in that island. So it's just like what happened when the white man came to America. A lot of Indians started dying of diseases like Puerto Rico, just like on Santo Domingo, Cuba, all those Indian tribes that live there, Tainos and all that, whatever you want to call them, Tainos, whatever. A lot of them, thousands of them died because of man. They died with terrible diseases. And this is what the country of India is trying to avoid. Trying to avoid that. You know, these people don't bother nobody. They don't know who the fuck is the presidents. They don't know who's kings. They don't they don't believe in none of that shit. They just believe in this island, that's their world, and everything they know is came from there. So now, this kid that I'm talking about, he's like, matter of fact, his name is was Alan. His name was Alan. Alan. It's all about helping people. It's all about preaching the name, preaching God and and and, and all this stuff about he you know, ever since he heard about this island, he wanted to go there. He wanted to go there to teach these people that he felt that was his job. He felt that's what God put him in this planet, this earth. That's why God chose him. He felt that God choice chose him to go to that island and convert these people into Christianity, to, to becoming Christians. So for years, for like about 10 years, maybe maybe 10, maybe eight years, this man was planning this. He kept on planning it and saving money. And all his friends was telling him, don't do that. You crazy. You're not going to make it. That has these people has killed. Um, plus, you might go to jail if they catch you around the waters. If they catch you, ain't nobody gonna take you over there anyway. No Indian is gonna. I mean, I'm talking about from India. No, in, no India. I mean, no people from India is gonna take them to the island because they know that the government of India said that these people should not be bothered if they catch you around the on the waters with a boat, or everybody's going to jail. 
He knew this. He knew this. But he felt that God put him here for that reason. Some people do anything for God. This is why I'm saying that maybe the kid went too far. Anyway, for days, he's begging the fishermen that lived that that worked in India, you know, the fishermen in India. He begged them. He, you know, he like, yo, please take me there. I pay you guys. Uh, whatever. He kept on for days and days up to a, a fisherman said, okay, I'll take you. Now, before he went to do this trip, he had to go and how you say that shit? Oh, God, there's a name for it. Uh, uh, purify himself. Uh, Corruptine. Cro- cro- I, 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 if I'm saying that right, cro- cro- I'm, I'm Corruptine. Corruptine is like he had to, self corruptine is, is that he had to stay in a little, in, um, in some kind of room or something like that by himself for about a week or two. Like that, he could be healthy. You know, he, he didn't want to get those people sick. Like I told you, like I told you, if they are afraid, the Indian government is afraid, if people start going over there, these people would die because, you know, we carry crazy fucking diseases. You understand what I'm saying? We carry shit that, that won't, won't, we won't, we won't die, but these people will die. Just imagine you have a cold and you start sneezing. <laughs> that fucking cold could kill hundreds of them, the whole 500. That little cough, that little cold that you got. Because remember, these people's not used to that shit. What happens, man? The guy does his thing for weeks. And, um, you know, the last days, his family is begging. His father and mother is begging him, please don't go. Please stay where you at or come back home. They even got a contact with the, with the Christian group. Remember, I told you that he joined this 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 group, and I forgot. I matter of fact, I didn't even catch the name, but he joined this Christian group group. And the father and mother called these people, and like, "Listen, man, my son is there. My son went, you know, he went with your people, and your people got to take care of my son. And please talk to him. Please don't let him go over there." But you know, these people can't do so much. I mean, he's his own man, so he goes. After, you know, family begging him not to go, everybody, his friends, the, the, the people that was in charge of that Christian group, whatever, whatever was the name of that Christian group, I, don't, I forgot, you know, whatever, whatever the name of that Christian group, they begged him not to go, blah, 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 but all that shit went to one ear, came out to the other one. Okay, final day, he goes, he gets in the boat, he got a bunch of shit with him, coconuts, because like I said, these people... They really don't know what is the life outside. And the the the, the Indian government knows that as, as years, you know, as when they try to go over there, they know that these people love coconuts. So he takes a bunch of coconuts, takes food, all type of food, everything to to offer as a gift to those people, to that tribe. So he goes, they take him, two boats, two boats, you know, one boat with the supplies and one boat with him and two other fishermen that's riding, that's driving that boat and another fisherman that's driving the boat that got the supplies. They both go over there. Now, this is like maybe, like maybe five miles or six miles, something like that away from Indian, from the Indian government. You understand? From the Indian, the land of India. Like six, seven miles away. If you guys look at it in a, in a, in a glow or you guys look at it in the map, you see it. You see India and you see like four or five little islands. One of those little islands I'm talking about. So they go. Now, this guy, when he gets there, when he gets there, the first thing he does, you know, Takes some supplies with him. He puts him like in a little canoe, a little bullshit canoe. He puts in a little canoe. He takes some coconuts, put it in there. He takes some food, puts it in the canoe. Now, this is an offering. Feel me? This is an offering for those people. So he goes and, you know, he's getting, you know, one more thing 
the fisherman that took him over there begged him again on that moment. And that moment when the guy is getting ready to get on the boat, the fisherman tell him again, please, don't go. Now, my man paid the fisherman. He paid them. He paid them good money. But they still they didn't want him to go. They was like, no, think about it. Think about it. And the dude was like, no, God put me here. They're not going to do nothing to me. He gets there. He goes, he, he gets on the canoe. He passes, don't, 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 whatever. He gets, you know, almost to the shore, almost to the, uh, you know, to the beach, whatever you can say, the beach, almost to the beach right there on his little bullshit canoe. He gets out. No more than 30, 40 seconds. These people, the tribe comes out, but they don't go where the beach is at, like where the sand is at. No, they, they ain't trying to go there. They see this guy, Adam. They see him. What the first thing they do, they pick up their arrows, like, you know, like letting him know we're going to, we're going to fucking blaze you up in this motherfucker. Get the fuck out. So this kid, is trying to talk to them in, they, in, in, in the language that he believes that these people will understand them. So all these people doing this is looking at him and they threaten him with, threat, with threatening, you know, body poses like, like, yo, I'm going to throw this at you. We're going to hit you with the, with the arrows. We're going we're gonna to fuck you up, kid. And this dude is standing his ground. God got me. I'm not scared. And he's trying to talk to them in the language that he believes they understand. But, if, you know, not for nothing, but they did it. <laughs> they, they, he tried, but they didn't understand what the fuck he was saying. They didn't understand shit. So he's there. He throws some coconuts. Why? Why? The people that, you know, the fucking tribe just looks at him when he throws the coconuts. They're just looking at him like, okay, he's throwing shit to us. You know, it's coconuts. We like coconuts. They love coconuts. They love their coconut. <laughs> I'm serious. They love their coconut. What they do, they don't pick it up, though. They don't pick it up. Now, what they doing is, now they're showing themselves to the, to the beach. But when they're showing themselves now, they're showing themselves with more threat to kill this dude. So Adam, what Adam does, he gets a little scared and he backs up. He backs up into the waters now, you know. Now they walking towards him. He backs up a little bit. They stop. He sees that they're picking up the coconuts. So he feels like, okay, I'm I'm you know, I'm 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 getting somewhere with these people. They they they're taking the coconuts. You know, I'm getting somewhere. So he throws some more stuff. Now he's throwing like packages of food, cake, whatever the fuck, you know, he's throwing it at them. They're looking at the shit. They picking some things, they grabbing, some things they're not grabbing. But guarantee you, they're grabbing all the fucking coconuts. Oh yeah, they they, they got their coconuts. You see that little island? Don't grow coconuts at all. So that's why, you know, I don't know. That's why they like the coconuts. Because I, I was thinking, I'm like, coconuts? Don't, don't every little fucking island got that? But that island don't grow. So they take in the shit, blah, blah, blah. He tries again to go back and talk to them. Now, these people are like, you know, like laughing, you know, like laughing. But every time this guy tries to get close, they pick up those arrows again. And he, he stops, pulses, and keeps on talking. But, you know, they're not letting him pass a certain amount. But they're not. But he thinks that he's making process. He thinks, he, you know, he's getting to them. And he ain't getting nothing to them. But they, they ain't trying to pay no fucking mind to this crazy retarded motherfucker. So... He goes back to the canoe. He goes back to the fisherman's boat. The next day, he does the same thing. Same thing. He tries to go back little by little. The people, the tribe, he's pulling up those arrows. And now what, what he is doing is he is getting these people frustrated. And not only frustrated, some of them are laughing at this guy. They, they probably found this guy fucking crazy. Like, this dude is crazy. Like, look, we got arrows and we ready to kill him. And he's, he, he's, and he's still trying. Still trying. Second day. Nothing. Thing he tried. Everything he did. Don't fucking. To 
the fisherman boat. The fisherman tells them, this is this is your second time, man. I mean, they're not, they're not going to do it. They, I mean, they're not going to let you, man. I mean, I heard of these people. These people are straight up cannabis. They're cannibals. Cannibals. Look what they did a few years later after that. A few years later, there was two men that wind up in the island by mistake. By mistake, they wind up in the island. You know what happened to them? They fucking, yo, they, 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 they took those two men. They murdered them, chopped their fucking heads off, and they put it on two motherfucking baboon sticks. The baboon sticks, um, I said, ba uh, yeah, baboon, ba ba the baboon sticks. They put them in there. They took their hair and says, bop, bop, warning other people not to do the same. And it was about mistake. It was about mistake. Those two men got to that, to that fucking little island. I'm pretty sure if they knew what was that, what island was that, they put them like, you know, fuck that shit. You know what I'm saying? Third day, three days now, bro. Third day, the same shit. They laughing, they mad, you know, one way they laugh, another time they putting out the arrows because they don't want no part of this man. Three fucking days, bro, three days he's trying this shit. And for three days, these motherfuckers ain't going for it. Now, on the third day, this is crazy, a little kid, a child from the tribe, goes and, and, and shoots a fucking dot. They shoot a dot. The shit hits the fucking Bible. Why he got the Bible up like this that he's preaching to the Bible. You know how they how they take the Bible and they and they put in their preaching and all that bullshit. So the kid throws a fucking dot. It hits the Bible. Boop. He looks at it. He backs up now. Now he's like, wow, these people really don't want to change. These people really don't want me here. So he goes back to the boat. This is the third day. So now the man, the the, the fishermen are like, okay, he's going to come back. He's not going to go back. They, they threw a dot. He knows if that if it would not been for that Bible, that dot would have hit him in the chest. He would have been dead. So now the fishermen are saying, okay, he's not going to go back. We're going to go back home. We're going to, you know, this nigga's going to forget about all that bullshit. No, he doesn't. All night while he's sleeping in that boat, the, uh, this dude is thinking, thinking, thinking until he says, fuck it. Maybe they don't let me in there because of these two boats. So now I know what you guys, you guys know where I'm going with this, right? So that morning he wakes up and he tells the fishermen, listen, you guys could leave. Now the fishermen are like saying, are you crazy? We're not, you know, saying we, we, and 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 this guy keeps telling him, "Break out! I got this. I'm with God. God got me." And while he's doing this, remember, it's three days now. He's also writing a journal. He's writing, and he's and he's recording everything on on, on on paper. He's recording everything that happened those three days. He's recording everything. That's why they know what happened to this guy. The story. What happened. They don't know how. They don't know how or what they did with his body. But on the fourth day, he tells the fishermen to go. So the fishermen, after begging him for three days, almost four, they decided to say, fuck him. So the dude gets on the boat on the fucking little bullshit, uh, whatever they, 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 they call it, canoe or whatever the fuck. He gets in the canoe. The fishermen are going. By the time he lands to the beach, by the time the canoe lands in the beach, he turns around and he sees the fisherman going away with the two boats. The last chance he had to go back to civilization just left. Just left. He had this fucking opportunity to get on the boat and say, get the fuck out, let's get out of here, bro. But no, he didn't do it. Because this is what I'm saying. Some of these people, some of these people are hypnotized with something. They hypnotize with something because these motherfuckers don't, don't comprehend that this is for fucking shit. It's dangerous. While the fishermen's leaving, all three fishermen all said the same thing. All they saw was the tribes 
dragging this dude by the hands, dragging him, literally dragging him on the beach until they didn't see him no more. But they said that he wasn't fighting. He was just like getting dragged. So while they believe was that once they got to him, they killed him right there instantly. Or they shot him with some arrows and, you know, caught him a couple of times and fell out. And they saying that the, the those fucking tribe just grabbed him by the hand and they was dragging him like if he was a fucking piece of paper, piece of garbage, and just dragging him like that. And when all they saw, the last thing they saw was his two feet. His two feet, they took his fucking shoes and everything. His two feet, that's all they saw, just going away little by little, getting darker and darker and darker and darker. Whoop. Up to they see no more of him. Up to now and day, now and day, they don't know what they did with that man's body. They don't know if they ate him. They don't know if they buried him. They don't know if they, if they, if they what the fuck you say, uh, if they burned him to life. They don't know nothing. Or they don't know if they just let him rot. But they, they do know that the guy, that man that went there, was probably dead by the time they grabbed him by the hands and dragged his body. That's what they believed, that he was already dead. They killed him, dragged his body, and they did party. Now, this is, you know, I understand, you know, a little bit why he felt that these people needed help. You know, I understand that. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if he wanted to be a hero or I don't know if he if he was doing this because of his heart or I don't know if he was doing this because he wanted to prove something. But one thing I do know, they killed him. And the mother and father try to blame those that, that Christian group. Uh, you guys, you guys brainwashed my son and you guys blah, blah, blah. But no, no. That was his own fault. Well, yeah, I think so. I think so. Ain't nobody makes you do nothing. You do it on your own because you feel that you could do it. Now, sometimes I wonder if these people that, uh, you know, like the Catholic Church, look at the Catholic Church, one of the richest, most powerful church ever. I mean, it's crazy. Billionaires. I mean, the Catholic Church is worth billions. Billions, bro. Do you hear any of those people doing anything crazy like that? No. No, you don't. It's just the same thing, just like the, the how you call them, the monks. And I'm not talking about no Chinese monks either. I'm talking about American monks, you know, they got them, right? You know, they got the, you know, monks that became priests and all that stuff. You know, uh, there's a story about those guys getting killed the same way, the same way by the Japanese, by the Japanese, because the Japanese believe in Buddha. And they did not like, they didn't like that a few fathers, and I'm talking about fathers, fathers, you know, with the black and the white, with the little white thing right here, a bunch of them got killed. If you look at um, if you look at the Japanese with Christianity, you would see you would see you, you would you would you would you would know the, the the story about the fathers getting killed that they was trying to go to Japan, try to convert these people into Catholic, try to convert these people into Christianity, and what all they did was see death. Do you think the church got something to do with it? Do you think the 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 how can I say it? the Christian the Christian people like really really could brainwash somebody's I mean could really fuck somebody's head like that? Do you really think so? I mean, do you really think people could get so blind that they think they could do anything in the world? Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of people that do crazy things, and that's because they fucking believe that they could do it. And the people that is for that, that is people that tells them, yeah, you could do it. But not on this kid, not on this guy, not on him, not him, not him. He did it because he wanted to do it. So, you know, this story is, is, is fucking, you know, it's is, is beautiful. And in one way, it's sad, man, because 
the, the guy did try to go and help, man. He, he tried to convert this group. He tried to convert this group into something that they don't have no knowledge about. That's like somebody coming to you, man, and, and, and telling you, yo, you know, there ain't no God or oh, there's God. And you're like, you know, a bunch of people trying to come to you to like, yo, believe in this and believe in the devil. And you're like, no, I don't believe in the fucking devil. I believe in God. Just like those people that, that do believe in all that crazy evil shit. A lot of those people get brainwashed. Yeah, a lot of them. A lot of them. For example, do you really think, I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys heard of this, the son of Sam? David, David Ber Berkowitz, something like that, David Berkowitz. Do you think he was by himself when those people got murdered? Do you think he did it by himself when those people got murdered? I don't think so. I believe in the end, um, he confessed one time, and, well, actually two or three times, and said that he didn't kill those people. That he, Yes, he did kill like three of them. He killed three of them. He did not kill the other three and wounded the other seven. Then about it too. I'm digging about it because I, you know, I go back. I was a kid back in that time. I was like, what? That was 1977, 78, 77, I believe. 77, 76, 77, 77. Let's say 77. I was a peanut head, but I remember that. I remember how everybody was fucking scared. Girls was cutting their hairs and shit like that. They wanted, they wanted to cut their hairs blonde. And my mother had beautiful black hair, long hair. God rest my mother's soul. She had some beautiful black hair. And my mother was even scared about that. My mother was even scared. I remember my stepfather was telling her to buy a wig. I swear to God, I remember my stepfather was telling her to buy a wig because this man was going out after beautiful black hair. You know, a lot of the girls that he killed had the same color hair. He never killed a blonde girl, you know, blonde hair, red hair. Never did they. All, all the girls had beautiful black hair. And he killed them. You know, some people just, just fucking crazy. Just crazy, man. And I don't know, I just wanted to share this story with you guys because I, I just kept thinking about the story. And I'm like, wow. Like, you know, like, like that shit could happen to anybody, anybody that believes that they could help. They, they they believe that they could help people so much that they would do anything, anything that that even if it's to. I mean, I'm talking about anything, even even risk their life, even risk their own life. Now, I don't know. You you think that's crazy, or you think is 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 you know. It's okay for you to do that. I mean, anybody could do whatever they want to do. It's your life. But I don't know. I don't know, man. It's just wild. And, you know, the more the more I see and the more I read, I just can't understand how, how shit like this happens. I really don't. You know, so... I just wanted to share this with you guys, you know, because I just, I don't know, man, just, just find this really interesting that this man was not scared. He was not scared. He was determined. He was determined to go and do what he had to do for God, for God. It's even written on the book. He had a waterproof Bible, a wider, a waterproof Bible. These people didn't even know what the fuck was a Bible, so they left it. They must have threw it in the water or whatever because they found the Bible. They found it. They found his journal. Right? They found his thing. The last thing he wrote was, if they kill me, it's okay with me because I did it for God. His last words. If they kill me, it's okay. I did it for God. Wow. You ask me, I think he got what was coming. If you ask me, I think he got what was coming to him. He should have known. People was telling him not to do it. And he decided that he's going to save the world. And look what happened. Do I blame, do I blame that, that, that Christian group that took him over there? 
to India. I yeah, I, I could give them a little blame. I could give them a little blame because some of those people, man, I mean, they just stick that shit in your head and stick it and stick it and stick it up so you can't think of anything else but that. And sometimes it's dangerous. Sometimes it's dangerous. Should I say it's dangerous to care? Yeah, it is. It's dangerous to care sometimes. Sometimes you, a lot of people care too much. Too much. Don't mind their business and what happens. They wind up getting hurt. You know, I love life. I love life, but sometimes, man, life could be fucking cruel. It could be really fucking cruel. Danny, I just want to say thank you, my brother, for coming up and joining me on this on this little thing thing. Um, you know, this man been doing his been doing the thing. Joker, what's up, brother? What's up, my brother? Everything is good. Um, you know, it's just crazy, man. It's just crazy that life could go like this, man. You know, I don't know, guys. You know, I got it right now. I'm being honest with you guys. It's a lot of things that's stressing me out right now. Two or three people know what's going on. I don't want to speak about it right now because I don't want to, you know, I don't want to, how can I say? I don't want to jinx anything. But right now, I'm just so much shit right now in my head, man. And, and I am so worried right now. That I, you know, I didn't want to do this. I didn't want to come in here and do another show for a couple of days. You know, I was thinking about leaving it for about a week or two, uh, to everything, you know, uh, to everything winds up the way I wanted to. And it's kind of, it's kind of hard when you know you have someone, and you know someone who 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 is sick. And you can't do nothing about it. You know, uh, um, find out three days ago, somebody I know, somebody that I love is sick. And I'm not talking about the corona. I'm not talking about that. I'm not, no, ain't, 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 ain't nothing like that. Somebody that I love and, and respect you know, got cancer. And all day yesterday, I'm just thinking and thinking, you know, you know, like, wow, you know, like, like, what can I do? What can I do, man? What can I do to, to, to make that person feel better, to, to go into that person, tell that person that's going to be all right. They're going to take care of you. You know, they, they, they're going to take that away from you. They, you know, and I can't because, because, you know, I, I I know that cancer is strong. I know cancer is something that kills millions of people every year, thousands of people every year. And I just, I just want to be strong for that person. So by me being strong, it's for me to continue what I've been doing. Look, guys. Um, Do me a favor. For that person who is sick, that means a lot to me. Love that person with, with, with my heart and then some. I need you guys to, if you guys believe in God, I need you guys to throw me a little prayer. All right? I will definitely let you guys know what happens. I'm not going to tell you guys who is it first. I'm not going to tell you guys who is it because I just, I just, I just want to get that person the privacy. I'll see you guys tomorrow.